Good afternoon and welcome to WICB News. I'm Nikki Carter. And I'm Don Shohan. This afternoon, the courts allow additional evidence in the Drew Peterson trial. A local school district is cutting teaching positions. And is student debt about to deliver a crippling blow to the economy? This is WICB News. A man was killed and two others were wounded Thursday night in a shooting on the south side. The three men were in a Jeep Cherokee in the 600 block of West 115th Street around 7.04 p.m. when a dark-colored sedan pulled alongside them and opened fire. The 29-year-old Lamont Coleman was pronounced dead at the scene at 7.39 p.m. to the Cook County Medical Office. The investigation is ongoing. Prosecutors in the Drew Peterson case have scored another victory after the 3rd District Appellate Court allowed the admission of eight new hearsay statements into evidence. The statements were made by Kathleen Savio and Stacy Peterson to friends and a minister before their deaths. Hearsay evidence of this nature is usually not admissible in court. I see if I don't know if they have enough evidence, but that's come we're having a trial, so hopefully they can push it along because I think he's been I think it's been just going on too long and dragging out too long. Uh, enough of a loan for a conviction? Uh, I would say no, but I think it would be good to support and corroborate an overall case. There is no doubt Peterson's attorneys will challenge the statements, but they face an uphill battle after the appellate court reversed an earlier decision not to allow such statements when the Illinois Supreme Court was asked to get involved. Drew Peterson is charged with the murder of his third wife, Kathleen Savio, and is a suspect in the disappearance of fourth wife, Stacy Peterson. A spokeswoman for Stacy Peterson's family said, This testimony is valuable, and we're happy it's being admitted to the trial. A Rockford man has been sentenced to 12 years in prison after burning a toddler by using her back to iron his work shirt. 43-year-old Elliot Moore pleaded guilty Wednesday to aggravated battery to a child before being sentenced. The incident was reported on February 5, 2010, when Rockford police were summoned upon a report involving the 18-month-old child, who had a large, large open burn mark in the middle of her back. The House Committee on Ethics is right here. Testimony from ex-Governor Rod Blagojevich's brother, Robert, about the sale of then-Senator Barack Obama's vacated Senate seat. Robert Blagojevich, who was eventually cleared of all charges of his own account, is ready to testify that U.S. Representative Jesse Jackson Jr. was ready to buy the president's vacated seat for a staggering sum of money. Gov Governor Blagojevich was convicted of 18 counts of corruption and was sentenced to 14 years in prison, which he began serving last month in Colorado. Police shot and killed an armed man at a crowded Cracker Barrel restaurant where two were killed and other wounded, sending customers fleeing out the back door. Police Chief Scott Milkey said officers shot the perpetrator when he refused to surrender to police. The restaurant stated that the violence appeared to be the result of a domestic dispute between customers. The restaurant will remain closed until the investigation is completed. Governor Pat Quinn announced today that Illinois will contribute $10 million to help make stretches of the Chicago River system safer for recreation, the latest step in a decades-long effort to improve waterways that were turned into sewage canals more than a century ago. The entire project is expected to cost $139 million, about seven times less than the $1 billion that officials at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District once said it would require. Officials now say they can pay for the project without a tax increase. A friendly game of basketball turned violent in Downers Grove last week when a 23-year-old Chicago man allegedly attacked a 20-year-old Glen Ellen native with a box cutter. The attack was prompted when the Glen Ellen man refused to pay on a bet over who would win the game. When the police arrived, both men declined to press charges, but the Chicago man was arrested on an outstanding warrant. Lombard is trying to get the bugs out. The emerald ash borer was first seen in Lombard in 2009, and since then, more than 100 infested parkway trees have been removed, and another will be Little removed this year. It really stinks because it's plant-specific, and it's totally killing ash trees, regardless of where they're at uh, or the type of ash that they are. The Village of Lombard Public Works Department are making test trial-sized insecticides to try to kill the destructive beetle's larva. The village will make an insecticide, which will be applied directly into the trunk of the tree, where the larva feeds. A 29-year-old woman was robbed at gunpoint by an unknown man Thursday night in North Aurora. The robbery happened shortly before 8.30 p.m. in an apartment complex on the 200 block of Lincolnway Street. Police described the robber as a black male, 5'10", with an athletic build. He was wearing a black hooded sweatshirt and jeans. 
Rahm Emanuel's ordinance to have speed cameras monitor red lights has passed the city council by a 33 to 14 vote. This ordinance will allow cameras to monitor red lights and take pictures of offending cars. The maximum fines that will be given out from these cameras will be $100. In the end, the mayor had to make changes to the ordinance in order to gain support by scaling back the hours the cameras would be used. Even though this will result in fines to offenders, many believe the opportunity to save lives far outweighs any of the negatives of the plan. No date has been set yet for the speed cameras to begin operating. Local, county, and state efforts have resulted in an arrest of 34-year-old Joseph A. Trusky on five accounts of aggravated child pornography. Naperville police officer tracked Trusky's personal internet connection from at least one website catering to people who share sexual images of children. Currently, he is detained in jail in lieu of $500,000 bail. The New York-style rail cars that were sidelined last year will make the reappearance on the L starting this May. The 40 cars that have been taken out of service in December, while the manufacturers investigated a possible safety concern associated with the car's wheel bearings. The affected cars have been fixed with new parts and are set to be phased back into the L's pink line during May. These cars feature more railings and handholds, providing more passengers simple supports to hold on to during their commutes. Happy birthday to Campton Hills, Illinois. The town turns five today as this day in 2007. Voters approved the town's incorporation with a 2272 to 1844 vote. A potluck will be held tonight from 6 p.m. to 7.30 p.m. at the Village Board meeting. Community members are welcome to join this event and should bring the dish to share. The Village will provide brisket, ham, cake, and beverages. Coming up on WICB News, another reported case of Salmonella. A local school district is cutting back teachers and Ray Gollin with sports. This is WICB News. When Raymond was 10, I couldn't let him play ball in the schoolyard because of the gangs. When he was 15, I wouldn't let him go to any dances because there could be a fight or a shooting. Now he's a man, and I realize he's never been a kid. Give your children back their childhood. Do something now. Call 1-800-WE-PREVENT. Together, we will take a bite out of crime. Childproof caps don't work forever. Prescription drug abuse can kill. Talk to your team. Another missed opportunity to talk about drugs. Don't miss your chance. We can help you be ready. Visit our website at drugfree.org. Welcome back to WICB News. In the most recent Salmonella outbreak, a tenth case has been reported in Illinois. This brings the national total to 116 cases. The outbreak is said to be related to a prior outbreak that occurred between January 28th and March 31st. No deaths have been reported so far, but 12 of the victims have been hospitalized. Students and parents at Oak Park and River Forest High School attended a meeting Wednesday evening to show their apprehension over non-tenor teachers being cut for next school year. Many feel that a big part of the problem lies in funds being misused. Parent John Mickelwain described his concern saying, We are planning on putting money into technology and furniture for the student center, and none of these things are going to touch the kids the way our teachers do. The meeting was called after members of the school received numerous emails and calls from students and parents alike in support of the teachers being let go. A 15-year-old baseball player at Batavia High School was hazed by his teammates after a practice during spring break. The boy was apparently taped to a bench and fellow teammates placed their genitals on his face. Batavia Detective Sergeant Glenn Ottenwright said, We don't have actual touching. The victim had his eyes closed and reported that he had not felt anything. The parents of the victim wish for the school to handle discipline internally. A Villa Park man drowned in the pond behind Bay Colony condominiums on Sunday. 37-year-old Anthony Hensley worked for Knox Swan and Dog, where he used swans and dogs to ward off geese in overpopulated areas. He was in the Displains Pond when a swan attacked him.
Hensley tipped over into the water and tried to swim to shore as the swan continued to attack. Rescuers found Hensley about 45 minutes later in 12 feet of water with no signs of life. He was rushed to Advocate Lutheran General Hospital in Park Ridge, where he was pronounced dead. A coroner ruled his death an accidental drowning. 12-year-old Eric Lederman from Wheaton was warming up for a game with his baseball team when he was hit in the neck by a baseball striking him in the carotid artery. He immediately collapsed and was airlifted to Advocate Lutheran General Hospital in Park Ridge, where he died on Thursday. A memorial fund has been created in Lederman's memory. Monetary donations can be made to the Eric Lederman Memorial Fund. The Chicago school chief, John Cleb Brizard, has admitted it was his idea to take the six and a half hour school days and change them to a full seven hour days, a proposal he then took to the school board members and Mayor Rahm Emanuel. Emanuel's announcement Tuesday that he was skimming back his longer school day proposal came as a surprise to some people. Jesse Ruiz, vice president of the school board, stated that, quote, we were evaluating all options until we reached a general consensus that this was the best approach. Due to unseasonably mild winter conditions, nearly 61% of the lower 48 states are experiencing abnormally dry conditions. The drought has affected several different areas on the East Coast. According to the U.S. Geolog Ge Geological Survey, stream levels in the New England area are at record lows for this time of year. Trouble also looms for the state of California as mountain snowpacks are reported to be 45% below normal. As the debate over the length of the Chicago Public School Day continues, a recent study has found that CPS teachers are working about 800 hours over their contractual obligations. This includes an 11-hour workday, another two nightly at home, and four on the weekends. This workload leads to burnout and high turnover rates for educators. The study also includes recommendations that lengthening of the school day will need to have teacher input or it will only further complicate the time burden facing teachers. Facebook won a court ruling on Friday rejecting a bid by thousands of advertisers to sue the company as a group for overcharging. U.S. District Judge Phyllis Hamilton denied the advertiser's request for class action status saying they failed to show they had enough in common to sue for breach of contract and violating California's unfair competition law. The national debt has risen to about $870 million as is expected to continue climbing, according to the Federal Reserve of New York. The National Association of Consumer Bankruptcy Attorneys referred a student loan debt bomb, and they wonder if it's going to be another burden to affect the already weak economy. Illinois State General Lisa Madigan thinks its student debt could potentially prevent Americans from participating in a full economy or ever achieve financial security. Westwood graduates who had dreamed of becoming police officers learned from police departments that they could not apply because Westwood did not have the proper accreditation. So instead of starting the careers of their dreams, most Westwood graduates are saddled with over $70,000 of debt. Madigan's office filed a suit against for-profit Westwood College in January, claiming that the school was putting its students in massive amounts of debt and that it awards a worthless degree. DuPage County Homeless Agency PADS will have funding constraints for the second straight year. PADS is an agency which provides services for around 1,500 homeless men, women, and children. The number has decreased between 2009 and 2011, resulting in Illinois legislator funds being cut by more than half, severely limiting the agency monetarily. Six Best Buy stores in the Chicagoland area will be closing as a part of Best Buy's plan to close a total of 50 stores nationwide. Four of the stores, including Chicago, Matson, Mundelein, and West Dundee, will be closed on April 14th and reopening on April 15th for final sales before closing for good on May, 20th, May 12th. The, addition and the Addison and Deerfield stores will be open today and did not release closing dates. Best Buy stated that they will help the employees find other positions with the company and could not say how many employees will be affected. Best Buy still has 53 stores in the Chicago area. There seems to be a new kind of magic mushroom that could actually help in the recycling of plastic and other polyurethane materials. Pestilatiopsis microspora was discovered by Yale researchers in Ecuador and could be found that it can survive without ear while eating nothing but polyurethane. Researchers are still trying to find the correct way to use the fungus. Coming up next, Ray Gollum with sports, and don't miss Joe Hollywood with all the latest entertainment buzz. You're watching Lumbar's number one news, station WICB. This is the hand that sows the seed that grows the forest. 
that gives shape to the wind, that carries the kite, that is flown by the child, that is loved by the woman, that gives to Earthshare, that supports the hand. Earthshare is the workplace giving program bringing the leading environmental groups together. Support Earthshare, support them all. To learn more, please visit our website. Call us about volunteering in Junior Achievement's new elementary school program and help expand kids' dreams for the future. Welcome back to WICB News with Sports. I'm Ray Gollin. For the past few seasons, the Wheaton College Thunder baseball team has been lacking the comforts of home. The team has made use of several different facilities as their home field over the last three years, including Schaumburg's Alexian Field and Benedictine University. However, a compromise with the city of Wheaton has opened the doors for the Thunder to finally return home. The, this past summer, Wheaton College reached an agreement with the city-owned Legion Field to take over and completely renovate the new Lead Fund Stadium, including installing lights and a brand new turf playing surface in place of the old natural grass. I think everybody that's come in has been very impressed with it, and, and who wouldn't be? I think uh, we, we did an excellent job, I think, on the field out here. Uh, just It's a great baseball atmosphere out here now, and I think the thing that it uh, does for our program is it gives our guys a chance to call something home and come out here something they'd be proud of. The newly reopened stadium features a new backstop, dugouts, and upon completion will include a 250-seat stadium, a press box, concession stand, and locker room. However, it has led to an adjustment for the Thunder moving from the previous natural grass surface to turf, but the Thunder seem to be in favor of the change. Um, you, know, you know what you're getting every time. That makes it a lot easier to, to, uh, to judge balls and play balls coming up off the ground, especially line drives that, that, could, that could bounce like a football on the old field. Wheaton hosting Millican University for the first of a three-game series, bottom of the first, when Drew Gold singles up the middle, driving home Ryan Miller with the game's first run. Fast-forwarding to the fourth, Phil Tuttle goes shopping at the gap that will plate Justin Swider for the Thunder. Plenty of offense in this one for Wheaton. Austin Driggers wraps a single up the middle to bring home goals. Evan Ron on the hill for the Thunder, and he will go the distance, but helps himself here with a tremendous diving catch. And Wheaton rolls to a 12-2 victory. Don't write Martin Brodeur off after one bad playoff game. The 39-year-old bounced back from his shortest postseason performance with a record-setting 24th Stanley Cup playoff shutout, leading his New Jersey Devils to a 4-0 victory over the Florida Panthers on Thursday night, tying their first-round series at two games apiece. The Chicago Cubs, losers of five straight games, might be down two key pitchers heading into their three-game series starting Friday against the Cincinnati Reds. The Cubs put reliever Kerry Wood on the 15-day disabled list with right shoulder fatigue. Ryan Dempster had an MRI on his right quad Friday, and his start against the Reds on Sunday is questionable, according to a source familiar with the situation. Several White Sox players made good use of their day off yesterday. Sox relievers Addison Mead, Reed and Matt Thornton joined Secretary of State Jesse White at the Thompson Center for an autograph signing. The signing was a promotion for organ donation as well as the release of the new Chicago White Sox state license plate. White and others addressed the crowd about the importance of organ donation and urged attendees to sign up to donate. Even the Sox mascot Southpaw made an appearance. The Chicago Bears upgraded their defensive line when they drafted defensive end Shea McClellan in the first round of the NFL draft last night. McClellan recorded 20 and a half sacks and 33 tackles for a loss during his four-year career with the Boise State Broncos where he played outside linebacker. McClellan says, it's awesome, unbelievable almost, just to play alongside guys like Julius Peppers and Brian Erlacher. Chicago Blackhawks head coach Joe Quenville has been fined $10,000 by the NHL for public comments critical of officiating after Tuesday's 3-2 Game 3 overtime loss to the Phoenix Coyotes. Quinville said the refereeing tonight was a disgrace in reference to a missed call by officials on Rafi Torres after he hit Hawks winger Marion Hosa in the head near center ice. Brutal hit. I saw the whole play, 100 miles an hour, no puck, Ted hit the head. It was a brutal hit. I can't believe four guys missed it. Makes me sick. Torres was suspended indefinitely on Wednesday, and he has a hearing with the league on Friday to determine how long he'll be out. Hosa left the game on a stretcher, but was released from an area hospital later that night. He has been ruled out for Game 4 on Thursday. After months of waiting and analyzing, Andrew Luck is finally a member of the Indianapolis Colts. 
The Colts selected the former Stanford quarterback with a number one overall pick on Thursday night, making him the heir to the throne Peyton Manning vacated when the Colts released him earlier this season. You really don't replace a guy like that, Luck said. You can't. You just try to do the best you can. Obviously, he was my hero growing up. Don't change that channel. Coming up next, Joe Hollywood has some breaking news on the new Avengers movie and the next chapter in the Hunger Games saga. This is WICB News. It can be a little awkward when your friend tells you he's been diagnosed with a mental illness. But what's even more awkward is, if you're not there for him, he's less likely to recover. I'm here to help, man, whatever it takes. I started using crank. It's just a dirty form of methamphetamine. I was just extremely paranoid and hallucinating bad. I was talking to myself, talking to the air conditioners. Ugh. I ended up on my front porch with a 357 Magnum pistol shooting at people that weren't there. I can overcome legal problems and I can live with seven felony convictions on my record, but some of the things that I had to do to myself for the sake of drugs, it's not something that you forget. Meth, it was bad. It was really bad. I'm here to tell you that reckless driving is the number one cause of teenage deaths. But with new and improved slow down, you don't have to die. We should slow down. There is no spokesperson to prevent reckless driving. Speak up. You can't pay attention. Once you post your image online, you can't take it back. Anyone can see it. Family, friends, anyone. Think before you post. Welcome back to WICB News. I'm Joe Hollywood with your Entertainment Spotlight. For the fourth weekend in a row, The Hunger Games easily led the domestic box office, holding off three new wide releases from the top spot. It brought in another $21 million for Lionsgate, bringing its domestic total to around $375 million, and its worldwide total to just over $530 million. <clears throat> the Three Stooges was second at $17 million, and The Cabin in the Woods was third with $15 million. Lionsgate, the studio behind the Hunger Games film franchise, has found its man. THR reports that the studio has settled on Francis Lawrence, who directed I Am Legend, as the director for the second film in the series, Catching Fire. Lawrence has not officially signed on, but sources said the studio was prepared to make an offer late Thursday evening. Catching Fire is, of course, based on the Suzanne Collins novel of the same name, and is the second film in the trilogy. Dick Clark, radio and TV legend, is dead at the age of 82. It's time for America's favorite dance party, American Bandstand. And now, here's the star of our show, Dick Clark. Born 1929 in the Bronx, New York, Dick Clark was the host of American Bandstand, a top 40 music show that aired from 1952 to 1989. The show was a fixture for recording artists to debut new music and albums in the days before VH1 and MTV. He was also the host of probably his most famous show, Dick Clark's New Year's Rockin' Eve. He hosted the show solo until he suffered a stroke in 2004. He returned in 2005 co-hosting with Ryan Seacrest. And actually, Ryan Seacrest opened up American Idol on Wednesday night, praising the showbiz legend, saying, We can't begin tonight's show without acknowledging the passing of a television legend and my dear friend, Dick Clark. Without Dick, a show like this would not exist. Also calling him an incredible pioneer, he went on to say that he taught me how to do television. Hollywood power couple Brad Pitt and Angelina Jolie are engaged to be married. The couple were staunch equal rights activists and had refused to get married until gay marriage was legalized. However, after their kids began to ask questions as to why they weren't engaged, they decided to tie the knot. Said Pitt, We made this declaration some time ago that we weren't going to do it till everyone can, but I don't think we'll be able to hold out. It means so much to my kids. The ring was designed by Pitt himself and costs an estimated $1 million. No date has been set for the wedding, as Jolie still has three different film commitments. Sources tell Perez Hilton exclusively that Madonna's upcoming tour has sold over $250 million in advanced ticket sales and that there are many new dates in the works. If you live in South America, she's going to be spending a lot more time with you than you think. And if you're an Aussie, keep your fingers crossed, mate, that all these negotiations go well. Madonna's MDNA tour kicks off May 29th. Avengers reviews are slowly pouring in, and the first word from critics is positive. 
The Marvel-produced blockbuster doesn't hit theaters until May 4th, and an embargo was supposed to be in place until May 2nd. But with the film opening internationally on April 25th, many publications and online outlets decided to run reviews early. With one critic saying, what Whedon and Marvel have created here is not just extraordinary, but one of the most entertaining and satisfying comic book movies yet. While one dissenter says, unfortunately, this being a comic book movie, the need for biff, bang, pow tends to prevail. Gleeks, prepare yourself, it is definitely happening. Lindsay Lohan will be appearing on Fox's smash hit show, Glee. According to sources on the set, Lohan will be involved in one full day of shooting, which is TV speak for, she will be featured prominently. She will be playing herself as a celebrity judge for the Nationals competition. Mayor Rahm Emanuel announced that he plans on charging concert goers for premium seating for concerts during the Taste of Chicago. The city plans on selling all seats in the Petrillo Music Shell for $25 for each night, charging $40 for the seat plus a three-course meal. Lawn seats will remain free. I disagree with the fact that they're charging us now because I need money to spend on hot dogs. Not to get into the fair. It should be free like it used to be. The festival will draw national acts, however, none of the acts have been announced yet. Genres music fans can expect are anything from country, R&B, pop, and jazz. The Taste of Chicago will run from 11, July 11th to the 15th. And after Tupac was resurrected at Coachella this past weekend, rumors have already started swirling of a U.S. tour of the hologram. Dr. Dre said, why stop there? He said he'd be interested in bringing other long-dead legends back to life through the magic of technology. His first two suggestions... Jimi Hendrix and Marvin Gaye. But why stop there? Michael Jackson's name has been thrown out, as well as Jim Morrison and the band Leonard Skinner. Don't touch that dial. More WICB news coming up next. Sports are great for a kid's body. Steroids aren't. They can ruin tendons and legs and arms. Steroids can stunt bone growth and increase the chances of liver cancer, heart attack, and stroke. Steroids don't make great athletes. They destroy them. Talk to your kids. Need help? Get help. Visit drugfree.org. Hijo, ¿qué haces? Eh, no, lavándome los dientes. Muy bien, mi cielo. Dame un beso cuando te vayas. Sí. No dejes que el amor por tus hijos te impida ver esta nueva realidad. Uno de cada cinco adolescentes hispanos ha abusado de medicinas recetadas para drogarse. Ayuda a prevenirlo. Childproof caps don't work forever. Prescription drug abuse can kill. Talk to your team. We all know pets are smart, and they can almost possess a human-like demeanor. But pets can also detect horrible illnesses, warning their owners in enough time to get assistance. Still, animal experts don't have an exact science on the process, but it's likely that these animals can detect certain scents or changes of scents given off by the body when an illness is present. Way to go, Fido! This has been WICB News. For Don Chohan, I'm Nikki Carter. Have a great afternoon, Lombard.